Hi, I'm Christian Lloyd and I'm one of the illustration tutors and I'm here with Jane Horton who works at the OCA and happens to be a student on the illustration course. Uh, it's a rare opportunity for us to actually talk to a student about the assessment process. So Jane, how was it for you putting our work <laughs> together um, for assessment? Well, the whole, the whole thing of being somebody who works at OCA and being a student, in a sense, I suppose, it is a privileged position because I've seen the frustration of badly presented work. So I did put quite a lot of thought and effort into how I presented my work. I know that actually putting clear labelling on and making sure you've got printed stuff as well as some online stuff is quite important. But as far as the overall experience um, goes, I don't think I, in any other way it was an advantage because I think I've had the same difficulties and frustrations, thought I wanted to give it up at one point and then for some reason in the last two assignments I really kind of something clicked and I felt as though I was getting somewhere. Doing the course within a c kind of busy life, I mean, one of the things that struck us is the richness of your sketchbooks. It seems like you're drawing all the time. Mm. There's lots of material in there. I mean, what kind of strategies did you employ in order to give yourself the time to draw and give yourself the time to kind of work? Whenever I have a free moment, I'm sketching. So if I'm on a train, I sketch. If I'm on a bus, I sketch. If I'm in a car and a passenger, I sketch. I always have a sketchbook with me because I have an iPhone and I sketch on that and I have an iPad and I sketch on that. So I'm never short of a tool to draw with. Um, and I think that my sketching has improved because I draw every day. And the other thing is um, having a structure around uh, doing my work by going on sketch crawls with other people and being a member of Dr Sketchy, which is when burlesque ladies dress up and strut their stuff and then hold their poses and you can draw them because they're all kind of fixtures in my calendar which means I'm getting out to venues to draw. Mm. There's a real sense of um, progression that you've been on a journey that your work's improved and, and your sense of understanding of illustration has improved as well. Can you tell us a little bit about how that's taken place and the, and the relationship maybe between the kind of feedback that you've got and how you've responded to projects and maybe gone beyond projects? What I realised that actually a lot of students don't do is to alter the submission that they've done for each assignment and improve it on the basis of the feedback they've had from tutors. Maybe people don't feel that they've got permission to do that and I kind of realised that, of course, I've got permission to do that. And I should, if I'm being responsive, listen to your feedback and make adjustments. So like on my second assignment, when I did the fruit and veg, I did them on white backgrounds. And you said, well, why not do the red tomato on a red background, which I did. And it looked about 100 times better. So things like that and making those adjustments. And then the other thing is the feeling that I had permission to extend what I was doing beyond the brief. And that's something that I think you as a tutor are very clear on giving your students permission to do. Mm. And in, rather than thinking, right, you've got to do this a little cartoon or this little comic strip. My inclination was to start to develop it as an animation. And I just thought, well, this isn't an animation course. But you'd said, well, yeah, why not go for animation? Because I'd mentioned it and you encouraged me. So I ended up doing an animation and really enjoying it. it students recognising that the briefs are there in order to support them to make the kind of work they want to make and they're purely starting points. You know, that the briefs aren't something necessarily to be answered mm. directly, mm. but as a, as a stepping off place. And hopefully along the way that students will answer the project and kind of um, respond to it. But uh, as you've done, you know, kind of kind of move beyond and find other ways of working. That was the end of Solomon Grundy. <laughs>